if America ceases to be good, help. This is my second message on biblical government. On May 26th, we discussed three major topics comparing the Word of God to the Democrat and Republican plat platforms concerning abortion versus protecting the unborn, protecting versus shedding of innocent blood, and marriage and redefining marriage. God prompted me to preach this series for three reasons. Number one, God cares for the United States of America. He birthed this country. Number two, God wants to save America. And number three, the Church of Jesus Christ does not have a biblical worldview. We must be biblically informed so we can flow with God and not resist him in issues concerning sin and righteousness. Alex, I don't know if I can say his name right, but Alex Tocqueville was a French diplomat who spent nine months in the United States in 1981 and, or 1831 and 1832. And you might remember his quote written in his book, um, Dem Democracy in America in 19, 1835. President Ronald Reagan uh, quoted from that book uh, one of his, his famous statements. America is great because she is good. If America ceases to be good, America will cease to be great. Now some people try to discredit this quote is really from Tocqueville, although you can't, can't discredit the, the story that Reagan shared in his speech in March of eight, 1983. I like a story. An evangelical pr minister and a politician arrived at Heaven's Gate one day together. And St. Peter, after making the necessary formalities, took them hand in hand to show them their quarters where they, they would be. And he took them to a small single room with a bed, a chair, and a table, and said this one was for the clergyman. And the politician was a little worried about what might be in store for him. He couldn't believe it when St. Peter stopped in front of a beautiful mansion with lovely grounds, many servants, and told him this will be his quarters. And he couldn't help but ask, but wait now, that there's something wrong. How do I get this mansion while, it, while that good and holy man only gets a single room? And St. Peter said, you have to understand how things are up here. We've got thousands and thousands of clergy, but this is the first politician. <laughs> Whoever made it. On May 26, I, I, I preached a message and asked, does God care if and how we vote? I mentioned I am not preaching po political message, messages. I am preaching biblical messages from a biblical and a conservative biblical worldview. If God upholds his word above his entire name, we certainly ought to exalt the word of God above any political view. Amen? Psalm 138, verse 2. I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. You have magnified your word above all your name, above God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God's word is not only magnified above the name of any politician or preacher, his word is magnified above the name of Jehovah. True believers know that the buck stops with thus saith the Lord. We must come back to this is what the Bible says. We must come back to that. Our eternal destinies depend on this. Secular society has rejected scripture and exchanged the truth for a lie. The only way we can cast a righteous vote at election time is through minds shaped by the 66 books of the Old and New Testament. And we're going to look at just three things today. One is the LGBT, I should add, plus, plus, plus agenda, transgender bathrooms, and women in world sports. Earlier this spring, my oldest son, Eric, took his youngest daughter to a restaurant in, in Fort Wayne where his second daughter was working. And Allison and her little friend got up to go to the girls' restroom, and a man followed them. And Eric walked into that bathroom, 
he has a permit, he carries a gun, but he didn't pull it out, but he pulled that dirty jerk that should have never been in a woman's bathroom out. And he said, you are not going to be in here with these girls. Well, the police were called. They came and told Eric that he couldn't do this. It was against the law and that he could never go to that restaurant again. Something's wrong with this story. What would you do if somebody went into the restroom, some man went into the restroom with your, with your granddaughter? You would be a gutless coward if you stood there and let that be. You would be advocating your role as a parent, as a grandparent. We have responsibility to protect, protect them from perverts. What is our world coming to? Last spring, I drove to Vicksburg to meet with several state representatives and a large crowd of concerned citizens at a school board um, in Vicksburg. Following state Biden state laws, guidelines, they allowed men, complete with all their body parts, to use their women's bathrooms and locker rooms. The only caveat that they would come up with is that if the girls didn't want to be in a bathroom that the boys could come into, they could walk all the way across the school to the staff bathroom and use that, and yet they would be fined or, or, or in trouble if they didn't get back to class in time. How many of you were young once? How many of you barely remember? <laughs> Ladies, would you have enjoyed having a boy coming into the bathroom and using the stool beside you? Would you enjoyed having him walk into your, your shower after, after uh, physical education? Number one, what the Democrat Party says about the LGBTQ plus agenda. We will fight to enact the Equality Act, a bill that would alter our entire federal civil rights framework, gut religious liberty, and advance abortion. Democrat Party supports insurance coverage of gender transition, including surgery and hormone therapy, given many times without a parent's knowledge. We will ensure that all transgender and non-binary people can procure official government identification documents and accurately reflect their gender, that accurately reflect their gender identity. So a boy can go to the secretary and state, I want this to say I'm a girl and I want it to have my new name and they can do that. Supports banning practices aimed at existing patients with unwanted same sex attraction or gender dysphoria, including ministers and counselors. They can be fine if we try to help people come to their God-given gender. It'll protect the rights of transgender students, and they say we'll fight to enact the Equality Act, a bill that will allow biological men to play in women's sports if they identify as transgender women. I need to ask, who will protect the rights of students who are not part of the woke lie. Riley Gaines is an outstanding woman swimmer. She was a swimmer at University of Kentucky and, and a Southern Eastern uh, Conference champion. Then she went to the NCAA championship where she had to swim against a man who had changed his name to Leah Thomas because he identified as a woman. He had completed unremarkably on the University of Pennsylvania's men's swimming team, but because of his greater uh, lung capacity, because he was longer and leaner and stronger, he beat his female opponent. How fair is that? And what the Bible says about the LGBT agenda. I have a so-called friend who displays a rainbow-colored Trump love Trump's hate sign in her yard. She believes it's more loving to let people be whatever gender or sexual identity they want to be. Her motive is loving. I agree with her motive. Her motive is, oh, I just want to love everybody. But her theology is askew. June is Pride Month. Michigan has joined other states in promoting gay pride. What does God think about that? Many young people have been groomed to support deviant behaviors. The Bible says will land people in hell. Is it loving to let people go to hell? Is it loving to promote laws that 
protect those who are damning themselves to hell by things that God says will keep them from heaven. 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. I use this a lot in the jail. I have them read this. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, uh, if you get to the Greek, Catamites, those submitting to homosexuals, nor Sodomites, which are male homosexuals. Uh, think, of, and think of Sodom and Gomorrah. And he goes on in Corinthians, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And, and I, re I have prisoners read that and I say, I call that my old crap list. I used to do some of those things. Oh, crap. But the very next verse says, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Which is more loving, to point people to Jesus Christ or to let them go to hell in a handbasket? There's a huge difference between loving sinners and loving them so little, you let them slip into hell rather than speak openly about their need for repentance. Revelation 21, 68. And he said to me, it is done, Jesus speaking. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be their God and he will be my son or daughter, of course. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is a second death. Do you think there's still a literal hell? If there isn't, Jesus was a liar. Let every man be a liar, never the Lord. Contrary to woke thinking, God judges evil and defines evil in the Bible. And I think all liars includes people who believe they lie that they are held captive in a body contrary to their desired gender. It also includes those supporting gender-changing treatment for confused children and support. They lie by accusing God of making a mistake when assigning gender. Let that sink in. Romans 1, 22, 23. Professing to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God into an image by, like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God says to them, the next two verses, God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts dis to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. And going on in Romans 1, verses 26 and 27. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. For this reason, because they exchanged the truth of God for a lie, she's are thinking they're he's and he's are thinking they are she's. For even their women exchanged a natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in lust for one another, Men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of the error which was due. My folks, I'm reading the word of God to you. Verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased or a reprobate mind to do those things which are not fitting. A huge majority of America's politicians have reprobate minds. Their only hope is if they get saved, they confess their sin, and they repent of their sin. The Bible condemns all sexual sin, including adultery, fornication, same-sex relations, incest, child abuse, molestation, bestiality, pornography, etc. And Psalm 138.2 says, God has magnified his word above all his name. The Bible is magnified above every political party, especially those who rule contrary to the word of God. What about transgender athletes playing on teams other than the birth gender? 
In May of 2021, 34% of those polled said they should be able to play on teams that match their gender identity. In May 2021, 62% they should play on teams that match their, uh, match their birth gender. Thank God it increased to 69% in May of 2023. Guess what we are, I, I think we're wising up. Number three, what, what the Republican platform says about the LGBT agenda. We embrace the principle that all Americans should be treated with dignity and respect. Amen to that. We submit measures barring government discrimination because of one's views on, on marriage and family. Good, that's freedom. Supports the right of parents to determine the proper medical treatment and therapy for their minor children. That means a parent, uh, people can't start doing this stuff without a parent's permission. Opposes Title X being used to impose a social and cultural revolution upon an American people by wrongly defining sex discrimination to include sexual orientation to other categories. Opposes a reshaping our schools and our entire society to fit the mode of an ideology alien to America's history and traditions. It opposes President Obama, Obama's Title IX transgender bathroom edict. Why? Because it's illegal, dangerous, and ignores privacy issues. I don't have any kids in school anymore, but I'll tell you what, if I did, I would find out if they were going with the woke stuff and they were, if they were at that school, I would take them out. Why would you send a child to a school that's going to damn children? And then sex education. Pam and I enjoyed listening to some Christian activist moms at the Courage Tour in Howell, Michigan. Two had launched groups to protect their children from being manipulated by so-called educators. One of them from Texas told how her daughter had joined an after-school group and she thought, well, good for her. It was an art group and she, how hard can come from this? But it came out that this art group was teaching or pushing transgenderism. Transgenderism. And they were saying, do not tell your parents about this. Well, this girl got, got to the point that she was becoming suicide, suicidal. And she said, Mom, they're, they're saying that I might be a boy in a girl's body. Well, Mom got mad. And she took up the, the torch and she uh, started a thing that's now got, got hundreds of people in it fighting this kind of nonsense in the schools. The devil is hell-bent on confusing children and young adults about their gender. He doesn't want girls to become godly mothers or boys to become godly fathers according to their birth gender. The issue, this issue alone should, should, should motivate us to vote. I'm going to say it. If you can walk and you're a citizen and you don't vote, you are sinning against God and you're sinning against our nation. No excuse for not voting. So what the Democrat Party says about sex education, it supports the LGBTQ plus inclusive sex education with a full range of family planning services. In other words, uh, girls can go to our school's health counselor and, and arrange for an abortion or arrange for birth control and what have you. What the Bible says about sex education it says mom dad it's your responsibility now i say as long as the heir galatians 4 1 i say that the heir as long as he is a child does not differ at all from a slave though he's master of all but is under garden, guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the father whose choice is it that what school a child goes to fathers a few years ago our, our public our stewards school hired a he who wanted to be a she. I watched her interview, flipping, no, yeah, flipping her, his long hair, wearing a skirt and just, I mean, trying to mimic. And I thought, my God, what's coming to this? And, but thank God before we start, caused the scene with, with uh, the school board, that he quit. I don't know why, but I'm so glad that he quit. He was going to be teaching home ec and marriage and family. 
What's wrong with that picture? The Bible says, train up a child according to the tenor of his way, and when he's old, he'll not depart from it. So parents have a responsibility to help boys become men and girls to become women. It's up to us. And we are in a cultural war that will destroy any family and community, just like it did Sodom and Gomorrah. And I, I remember Jerry Falwell used to say, if God doesn't judge America soon, he will have to uh, condemn the United States of America. But we have one advantage. They couldn't find 10 righteous men in Sodom and Gomorrah. We've got thousands that are praying every day with Dutch sheets, daily giving 15. We have thousands that are praying. We have several righteous people. So don't give up the fight. We are going to win this thing. Good things are happening in Michigan's, um, Michigan's Democrat Party. Good, I said that. Good things are happening. Gretchen wanted to have a bill that would force homeschools and, and Christian schools to follow the same woke theology of, of transgender bath, bathrooms. She wanted it to, it was pushed up. I mean, she had, that was a high priority to her. Just last week, one of the legislators said, now it's on the bottom of her pile because she's, she's had so much feedback from Christian parents who have said, if you do this, we'll move from the state of, the state of Michigan. We are going to train our children correctly. So praise God, some good things are happening. But it's only going to happen within the, the Democrat Party if Christians vote and if Christians make their voice heard. Number six, what the, the Republican Party says about sex education, it supports sexual risk avoidance education that says the best uh, preventative measure is don't have sex until you're married. That's what the Republican Party says. To me, it's plain to compare the Word of God that, to the two political parties and see how one is in direct opposition to biblical values while the other supports biblical values. I ask again, does God care if and how we vote? And look again at abortion and the LGBT agenda internationally. Uh, what the Democrat Party says about the LGBT agenda? We believe access to productive care and abortion services are vital to empowerment of men, women, and girls. We believe we need to be able to abort babies or women will be harmed. It supports the repealing President Trump's expanded Mexico City policy and the Helms Amendment, which bar America funding for abortion abroad. And it says, we will restore the United States position of leadership on LGBTQ plus issues and appoint senior leaders directly responsible for driving LGBTQ issues within the federal government. That's their mindset. I want you to understand that. What the Bible says, number eight, about the LGBTQ agenda internationally. It says it's time for the church to be the church. It's time for the ecclesia to get out of their pews, start to speed up, start to preach righteousness, start to say right is right and wrong is wrong, start to uphold the word of God and, and show what it says about life and death, heaven and hell. Back in Acts 1.8, Jesus said to the, the disciples, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. If he was doing it here, he would say Sturgis, St. Joseph County, Michigan, and to the other most parts of the earth. The Bible says we need to stand. We need to fight. We need to speak up. We need to vote. Number nine, what the Republican Party says about this, it opposes the federal government funding of abortion overseas. It supports uh, restoring the Mexico City policy to prevent money, federal money, from going to... NGOs which provide or promote abortion or are compliant in China's one child uh, policy. It condemns the uh, Obama administration for imposing on foreign recipients, especially the peoples of Africa, its own radical social agenda while excluding faith-based groups. And one more thing while I'm hurrying you along today, conscious rights in healthcare. 
Should doctors be forced to perform abortions? Should doctors be forced to leave babies who survive abortions to die in, on the table without treatment? Should medical workers be fined for refusing to participate in gender transition treatment? Should teachers be forced to teach subjects contrary to their consciousness? Should parents face prosecution for protecting and refusing to let their minor children have abortions or gender transitioning treatment? Liberals and, and, and conservatives are odd in this. Number, number 10, what the Republican Party says, America's healthcare professionals should not be forced to choose between following their faith and practicing their profession. We respect the rights of conscience and healthcare professionals, doctors, nurses, pharmacists, and organizations, especially the faith-based groups which provide a major portion of care for the nation and the needy. Number 11. What the Democrat Party says about the conscience, conscience rights in health care. Supports a coercive HHS contraption mandate against faith-based groups like Little Sisters of the Poor. Condemns uh, the Trump administration clarifying the definition of sex discrimination in the Affordable Care Act. This regulation allows doctors, hospitals, and insurance companies to practice medicine and operate in accordance with their conscience. Number 12, what the Bible says about conscience, rights, and everything. True believers put their faith in Jesus Christ. Study the Bible for yourselves, uh, or study the Bible for yourselves and, and be approved unto God, and build your lives on what the Bible says, and by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Believers should build their lives on conviction, not preference. Believers are people of conviction. Our heroes are Daniel, who continued praying three times a day, though the king decreed anyone who prayed to anyone but the king would be thrown into the lion's den. The three Hebrew children who refused to eat the king's rich food, even though they knew they would be thrown into the fire, blazing furnace actually, Joseph refused to sleep with Potiphar's wife, which led him to be thrown into prison. The disciples chose to obey God rather than men, and many of them were killed because they refused to surrender their convictions. James 4:17. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. I wonder if you'd pray this prayer with me. Lord, we confess we have not. Are you there? Lord, we confess we have been lead, not been leading people to Christ. We confess we have not been your voice in government. We ask you to help us seek first your kingdom and your righteousness, first in our homes and church, but also in our city, state, and nation. In Jesus' mighty name. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men, good women to do nothing. Will you make this decree with me? Do I have that decree on there? Huh. Okay, decree it after me. We are good people who will do all we can do with God's help to triumph evil by following God's word and lead in voting according to thus saith the Lord. Amen. Would you stand for a blessing? Father, bless us by helping to, us to repent of all apathy, indifference, even sticking our heads in the sand. Bless us with a knowledge of your spirit. 
bless us with that, that still small voice of God that Jesus said, my sheep will hear my voice. Help us, bless us to know what you are saying through your word and through your spirit. Father, bless this church. I know this church has a pastor that preaches against the grain of society. I know there are some that would call that illegal. But Lord, we ask you to protect us as we stand on your word, both according to our conscience. In Jesus' name. And Lord, I speak a special blessing to the, today to those that are carrying heavy, heavy loads. To moms who have children that are struggling with addiction. To wives that have husbands who are dreadfully sick. To those who are dreadfully sick. God teaches your will, your way. In Jesus' name, amen.